Now the next topic that is magnetization and magnetic intensity. Now magnetization of any substance or any sample means what? Magnetization of any sample that is nothing but the net magnetic moment of that sample per unit volume. Suppose net magnetic moment of given sample that is M net and its total volume is V. Then M net upon V that is the net magnetic moment of the sample per unit volume and that is called its magnetization. Its unit that is ampere per meter. You can write the dimensional formula that is M0 L minus one T0 A1. Now, if we consider a solenoid having n tons per unit length, which one is carrying current I. Then in previous chapter, we studied this thing, the magnetic field inside it that is given by B0, that is mu0 n I. Now, mu0 here appears, that is the permeability of free space because at present, Inside the solenoid, the air is there. We can say that is the free space. So core, core of the solenoid, that is the free space. So here we take the permeability of free space. Now N into I, that is called H, that is magnetic intensity. Now, N that is number of turns per unit length, I that is current through each turn. So N into I will give you total current per unit length of the solenoid. And that is magnetic intensity. So its unit that will be also ampere per meter. It implies that inside the solenoid, if core part that is the free space or air, then the magnetic field that is mu zero into H, where mu zero that is the permeability of that core part, which is the free space. Clear to all of you? Now, if you want to magnetize any sample, then you have to place it in the uniform magnetic field. So if you want to magnetize any sample, then you have to place it inside the solenoid. So in other words, we can say now the core of the solenoid that is made by that particular sample. Now that some sample will be magnetized one. So if it is magnetized one, then its own magnetic field will be also developed inside the solenoid. So if the sample is placed inside the solenoid, then the resultant magnetic field, that is B0 plus Bm. B0 that is due to the current flowing through the solenoid and Bm that is the magnetic field of that sample, which one is now magnetized one. So it's sample behave as magnet. Now, B0, that is mu zero into H. Bm, that is the additional field due to magnetization of that substance. But, here Bm, that we can write mu zero into M. So resultantly we can write the magnetic field B that is equal to mu zero and I plus mu zero into M, okay? This one you have to accept the 
magnetic field of the sample that is mu zero into m because experimentally we can observe this thing the magnetic field directly proportional to the magnetization of the sample now ni that is equal to h so we can write mu zero h plus mu zero m clear up to this one now from this equation mu zero h plus mu zero m we can take a mu zero common therefore b equal to mu zero into h plus m so you can write from this equation b upon mu zero that is h plus m and h that is b upon mu zero minus m so magnetic intensity h that is n into i as well as we can write that is equal to b upon mu zero minus m also this is one result that is useful to solve the problems now experimentally we can observe this thing the magnetization of the sample that directly proportional to magnetic intensity see h that is ni if ni is more means the total current per unit length in the solenoid is more there inside the solenoid the magnetic field of the solenoid becomes stronger one and if magnetic field produced by the solenoid becomes a stronger one then the magnetization of the sample placed inside it that also increases so here we can write m magnetization of the sample that directly proportional to h okay so m that is equal to chi h where chi that is known as magnetic susceptibility of that particular sample magnetic susceptibility that is the susceptance of magnetic field by the sample now if we substitute the value of m that is equal to chi h in this equation then we will get b that is equal to mu zero into h plus chi h now take h common so you can write mu zero into 1 plus chi into h now this 1 plus chi that is called the relative permeability of that sample so we can write b that is equal to mu zero mu r h where mu r that is 1 plus chi but here you can rewrite this one like this also mu zero into mu r that is mu also so resultant magnetic field now we can give by b that is mu into h where mu that is the permeability of that particular sample that is mu zero mu r clear to all of you initially when the sample was not placed inside the solenoid at that time the magnetic field inside the solenoid was mu zero into h but now when the sample is placed inside the solenoid and its magnetization takes place so the resultant magnetic field now that becomes mu zero mu r h it implies that the resultant magnetic field becomes mu r times more than initial one clear to all of you example 5.10 a solenoid has a core of a material with relative permeability 400 
the windings of the solenoid are insulated from the core and carry a current of 2 ampere if the number of turns is 1000 per meter calculate h m b and the additional magnetizing current i m here add the word additional clear now see here relative permeability that is given to you for the sample that is mu r equal to 400 number of turns per meter that is 1000 and current flowing through the solenoid that is 2 ampere so first h h that is magnetic intensity magnetic intensity h that is equal to n into i n is 1000 i that is 2 so 2000 ampere per meter then after m that is the magnetization magnetization that is chi h and 1 plus chi that is mu r so chi that is mu r minus 1 so here substitute chi that is mu r minus 1 mu r is given to you 400 minus 1 h that is 2000 now when you solve this one you will get the answer nearly equal to 8 into 10 raised to 5 ampere per meter okay then after the magnetic field so resultant magnetic field b that is mu r mu 0 h mu r that is 400 mu 0 that is 4 pi into 10 raised to minus 7 and h that is 2000 when you solve this one, your answer will be 1. Clear up to this one? Now see the last question, additional magnetizing current means, here see, due to the sample placed inside the solenoid with relative permeability mu r, the resultant magnetic field B obtained that is 1 Tesla. Now, the fourth question, D question is like this. If this particular sample is not placed inside the solenoid and then also you want the resultant magnetic field 1 Tesla, then how much additional current that you have to pass through the solenoid? Now, inside the solenoid, the field that is given by mu 0 n into i. Now we want the field that is this resultant one. So with this current i, we will not get this one. So how much additional current that we have to pass through it? Suppose additional magnetizing current i m that we have to pass through the solenoid to get this particular resultant magnetic field 1 Tesla. Now, our equation turns to B equal to mu 0 n i plus i n. So, B, that is 1. Mu 0, that is 4 pi into 10 raised to minus 7. N 1000, i that is 2. And i m that we have to calculate. Now, if you solve this one, then your i m that will be large current that will be of the order of approximately very close to 800 ampere clear to all of you now magnetic properties of materials susceptibility relative permeability and permeability of the material now see depending on the magnetic properties of the substances available in the nature. The substances are categorized in three categories, diamagnetic substances, paramagnetic substances, and ferromagnetic substances. Okay. Now for this, dia, para, and ferromagnetic substances, their susceptibility, relative permeability, and permeability 
are given to you here in this particular table. See, if we think about the susceptibility, then susceptibility for diamagnetic substance that is less than zero and greater than or equal to minus one. For paramagnetic substances, the susceptibility that is between zero and E, E is a small positive number introduced to qualify the paramagnetic materials. And you don't worry about that particular number. We have nothing to do with it at present in our text. Okay. Then for ferromagnetic substances, the susceptibility that is very much large compared to one. Okay. Then relative permeability. So relative permeability of diamagnetic that is between zero to one. So it is greater than or equal to zero, but less than one. For paramagnetic substances, the relative permeability that is between one and one plus E. And for ferromagnetic substances, it is very much greater than one. Now permeability for diamagnetic substances that is less than the permeability of a free space, permeability of paramagnetic substances that is greater than that of free space and permeability of ferromagnetic substances that is very much greater than mu zero. You have to remember all these things, clear? Now, diamagnetism first. Diamagnetic substances are the ones in which resultant magnetic moment in atom is zero. So, atoms does not possess permanent resultant magnetic moment. When these particular substances are placed in the external magnetic field. Then the magnetic moment is induced in the substance and the magnetic moment induced in the substance that is in the opposite direction of the external field. So the field of the sample inside the sample that will be in opposite direction of the external field. And due to that, the resultant magnetic field inside the sample decreases for this diamagnetic materials. Clear to all of you? So here, as we increase the external magnetic field, then inside the sample, the magnetic field continuously decreases. Now see here, for the external agency, the North Pole and South Pole are represented here in the diamagnetic sample placed in this magnetic field of this agency, the dipole moment is induced in the opposite direction of the field of agency, means towards the south pole of the external agency, south pole of the diamagnetic substance will be induced towards the north pole of the external agency, north pole of the sample will be induced. Now, if this diamagnetic substance is placed in non-uniform magnetic field, then also the magnetic moment will be developed inside the sample that will be as it is. But 
Now see here, this south south and this north north will repel each other. Now this is the non-uniform magnetic field and here you can observe this thing. In this particular region, the magnetic field that is a strong one and in this particular region, magnetic field that is weak one. Now, the repulsive force on this side that will be greater than the repulsive force on this side. Therefore, resultantly, your diamagnetic substance when placed in the non-uniform magnetic field, it will move from strong magnetic field region to weak magnetic field region. So from this behavior, we can understand this thing, this particular sample that is the diamagnetic substance. See, diamagnetic substances are those which have tendency to move from stronger to the weaker part of the external magnetic field. Clear to all of you? Now, some diamagnetic materials are bismuth, copper, lead, silicon, nitrogen, and STP, water, and sodium chloride. Diamagnetism is present in all the substances. Clear? See, we already discussed this thing. When diamagnetic substance is placed in the external field, inside the substance, the magnetic field decreases. Means, in other words, we can say diamagnetic substance expels the magnetic field lines out of it. So, the most exotic diamagnetic materials are superconductors. These are metals cooled to very low temperatures which exhibit both perfect conductivity and perfect diamagnetism. Here the field lines are completely expelled and its susceptibility that becomes minus one and relative permeability that becomes zero. And when this happens, then this phenomenon of the perfect diamagnetism in superconductors that is called Meissner effect on behalf of the name of scientist who discovered this thing. Superconducting magnets, are used for running magnetically levitated super fast trains. Clear to all of you? Next, paramagnetism. Okay. So, paramagnetic materials are such materials for which the individual atoms possess permanent magnetic dipole moments. Now, if a bar of paramagnetic material is placed in the external field, the field lines gets concentrated inside the material and the field inside is enhanced. The net dipole moment is induced in the direction of the external field. And when these paramagnetic substances are placed in the external non-uniform magnetic field, then they have the tendency to move towards strong magnetic field region from weak one. Okay. Now see, here in figure, it is represented when the paramagnetic sample is placed in the external field, then its dipole moments, say individual atoms possess permanent dipole moments, but all those dipole moments are randomly oriented. So when we take the vector summation of all these, then net magnetic moment that is zero. And therefore, 
this substance is does not show you the magnetic properties but as soon as we place it in the external magnetic field all the dipole moments will try to align themselves in the direction of that external field okay so inside the sample the magnetic field developed that will be in the direction of the external field therefore inside the substance magnetic field becomes stronger one it implies that we can say this thing the field lines concentrated inside the material now see here due to the alignment of this dipole moments the south pole induced in the sample that will be towards the north pole of the external agency and the north pole in the sample will be induced towards the south pole of the external agency therefore when we think about the non uniform magnetic field this poles will experience attractive force and attractive force towards the strong magnetic field region that will be dominant one therefore the tendency of this particular sample that is to move towards the strong magnetic field region clear to all of you now some paramagnetic materials are aluminium sodium calcium oxygen at stp and copper chloride now experimentally we can observe this thing the magnetization of the paramagnetic substance that directly proportional to the intensity of the external magnetic field as we increase the external magnetic field more and more number of magnetic dipole moments will align in the direction of the field of that substance so as the number of dipole moments align in a particular direction increases then we can say the magnetization of that substance is increasing one so m directly proportional to b0 as well as m proportional to 1 upon temperature as we increase the temperature then due to thermal excitations the randomization of the dipole moments increases and if randomization increases then the magnetization decreases so resultantly we can write m the magnetization proportional to b0 by t so we can write m that is c b0 by t where c that is curie is constant on behalf of the name of the scientist who experimentally studied all these things okay now here on right hand side multiply and divide by mu 0 so c into b0 mu 0 upon mu 0 t but here b0 upon mu 0 that we can write h the magnetic intensity now take this h on left hand side so m by h that is c mu 0 by t but m that is chi h so m by h that is chi so chi that is c mu 0 by t clear up to this one now this equation that is known as curie's law after its discover peer curie the constant c is called curie's constant thus for a paramagnetic material both chi and mu r depends not only on the material but also on the sample temperature as the field is increased or the temperature is lowered the magnetization increases until it reaches the saturation value 
m s at which point all the dipoles are perfectly aligned with the fields beyond this the magnetization of sample is not possible because all the dipole moments are now aligned so beyond this curie's law is no longer valid clear to all of you beta now ferromagnetism the individual atoms or ions or molecules in a ferromagnetic material possess a dipole moment as in a paramagnetic material however they interact with one another in such a way that they spontaneously align themselves in a common direction over a microscopic volume called domain and each domain has a net magnetization typical domain size is 1 mm and the domain contains about 10 raised to 11 atoms means see here see the figure here some dipole moments are represented in the figure here each and every dipole here is not aligned in a particular one direction but some dipole moments align in a particular direction we can say this dipoles interact with each other and in this small region this particular number of dipoles are aligned in a particular direction so if we take the vector summation of all these then resultant magnetic moment of this domain that will be as shown in this figure by this green arrow we can represent similarly for nearby domain suppose some dipole moments are aligned in this particular direction if we take the vector summation of all these then the resultant magnetic dipole moment of this entire region will be obtained as shown by this green arrow so in this way the domain structure is possessed by this ferromagnetic substance and for each domain the resultant magnetic dipole moments are randomly oriented see resultant of this one resultant of this one resultant of all other domains are randomly oriented so net dipole moment again of the substance that comes to zero and therefore in normal circumstances this will not exhibit any magnetic characteristic and see here in a particular 1 mm size of the domain 10 raised to 11 atoms are there means 10 raised to 11 dipole moments are there clear up to this one thus in a ferromagnetic material the field lines are highly concentrated and in non uniform magnetic field the sample tend to move towards the region of high field when the external field is removed in some ferromagnetic materials the magnetization persist such materials are called hard ferromagnetic materials or hard ferromagnets alnico an alloy of iron aluminum nickel cobalt and copper is one such material such materials are such materials form permanent magnets to be used among other things as a compass needle on the other end there is a class of ferromagnetic materials in which the magnetization disappears on removal of external field soft iron is one such material such materials are called soft ferromagnetic materials there are a number of elements which are ferromagnetic iron cobalt nickel 
etc the relative magnetic permeability that is greater than 1000 the ferromagnetic property depends on temperature at a high enough temperature a ferromagnet becomes a paramagnet this disappearance of magnetization with temperature is gradual it is a phase transition reminding us of the melting of the solid crystal the temperature of transition from ferromagnetic to paramagnetism is called the curie temperature tc the susceptibility above the curie temperature it implies in the paramagnetic phase is described by chi that is equal to c upon t minus tc where t that is greater than tc